Aarhus model, uh, which is a program that was uh, started by the municipality of Aarhus in Denmark. Uh, it's uh, an anti radicalization program targeted especially as, uh, at Islamists, let's say Salafists to be more precise, uh, which is, I mean, Islamism is, is many things, also many peaceful things. Um, so, um, the, the main finding of the, of the research that led up to the program, which has since been confirmed through the program, is that uh, most people become radicalized through experiences of discrimination and injustice. Uh, and the municipality, uh, in order to, to deal with this issue, uh, basically issued um, different guidelines that, very, that specifies, specified other ways of, uh, of relating to people with, with migration background, um, and let's say workshops to, uh, to help teachers, municipal staff, and so on. Um, and, uh, as well, working with education institutions in order to provide equal opportunities in terms of jobs and training for people with migration background. Yeah. I, I, would, I would expect that you find something similar if you look at uh, people who go to far-right uh, extremism, experiences of discrimination, <laughs> lack of uh, training places for, uh, you know, crafts or whatever, uh, lack of jobs, the perception that a migrant got the job in front of you and so on. So I think uh, the main ways in which to target, uh, like the lesson of this, the main, the best way to target ex these forms of extremism, if you want to call them that, is to uh, basically <laughs> uh, stop this discrimination because it happens where you can, <laughs> uh, create fairness and a sense of justice when currently there isn't, and target the current economy of scarcity. This idea that there are not enough jobs to go around for everyone, not enough uh, training places and so on. So, right now we're in an economy of scarcity. Of course, not for everyone, some people have plenty, but uh, the, this, this sense of scarcity creates a sense of injustice, which creates extremism. We have, we have to, to address that on a structural level. We need social movements to take the streets, we need institutional power, we need the digital media, and we need to go on television. Okay, so I'll provide an example. There was a, a fascist demonstration in, in Madrid, and it was only like 1,000 people, but it was uh, dangerous, and, uh, and they could be appealing for a certain part of the population. So immediately, an anti-fascist organization organized a demonstration, and it was very interesting, because it wasn't the traditional anti-fascist movement of Madrid, which was always male, dressed in black, and with hoodies. Now it was women dressed in pink and saying Madrid is for everybody. Um, and that's very different, much more appealing. So they gathered 5,000 people and they said, this is the alternative. Don't go with them, come with us. And it worked. But it's still only 5,000 people. You need to go um, to the television and then reach a wider audience. What happens when you go to television, and we also have a lot of experience with that in Spain, is that they will accuse you of being a communist, of being related to Venezuela, and people will start to dislike you, and you're going to lose votes, and that's what happened. And we lose elections, we disappoint people. Um, so, um, we have to build these four elements in order to build networks of counterpower at the local, national, and international level, all of them. Otherwise, we don't win. Um, so, television, then we go to the digital media. There we have more freedom, we can do as we please, However, in the end, there are, there are many limitations, and in the end, we are uh, speaking between, uh, we create political ghettos of highly educated and politicized activists, and we speak among ourselves. I still don't see all of us. I don't see, still see everybody, and it's difficult. I don't have the solution. But we need them, of course, as, you, as all of you have mentioned. So the fourth element is to take institutional power because that gives us legitimacy, okay? People trust us more if we, uh, if we achieve institutional power. Still, that institutional power is very limited, especially at a local level. That's what happens in, in Madrid, in Barcelona, in Valencia, in many cities. It's positive, it's a change, but it's extremely limited. Um, so we have to build the, the connection with the national level and with the European level. And, of course, I don't have the solution, but I would like to reclaim the values of the French Revolution, freedom, equality, and nowadays especially fraternity. 
we don't want, uh, people don't want the left or um, activists to be fighting each other. They want us to solve our problems and then to speak with them. And uh, so that's what we have to do and to use diversity that we have it to build unity. Okay, so I would like to finish with uh, just one question. Um, connected to fraternity and this, uh, will the southerners and the northerners join at the bar to fraternize and have some beers together? And join the normal people also? I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Then thinking about the alternative, which I think connects very beautifully with the last two presentations. There we have different kinds of movements, perhaps the, the, the right of the city movements, the right for the common movements, that are actually thinking at the local level, within the municipality, about a way of imagining the local space uh, as a non-distinctive space between citizen and non-citizen. Right? They're challenging that fundamentally. The right of the city is about the right to intervene in the city, right? which, which pertains to everyone, which pertains to all, as, as Manuela said. It. So then how, how can we build these connections between the different kinds of movements? And I would sort of challenge us to think, perhaps the panel, but also the audience, who have been very patiently <laughs> listening for all this time, to try and think how do we build those pan-European transnational networks, a federation of struggles or confederation of struggles, how do we connect these movements, how do we pool knowledges, experiences, and what, because I think, I mean, I, I'm, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Um, I'm a professor at an American university in, in Madrid, but also an activist, I'm involved in the municipalist movement. I was, for example, in, in, in Malaga last weekend, where the, the first encounter of the Primera Jornada de Municipalismo in España was, and they were precisely speaking about this, how to connect out, what, what you guys were organizing yesterday, how to connect out with other movements uh, across Europe. Well, I think we're, we're at the very beginning of this thought process, how to do that. And I think that's very, very important, because, as I say, while we might have reimagined the municipality, the local space, where, where we're challenging this distinction between citizen and non-citizen, with a very interesting suggestion that Manuel and were, were proposing. Well, how do we reimagine Europe? How do we reimagine that, that level? And there are quite very interesting discussions in the Coronadas de Municipalismo in Malaga about a potential constituent process, right? How to start, how to initiate a bottoms-up social movements-based, uh, different kinds of social movements that are, are coming together in this space, uh, a bottoms-up pro process of reconstituting the, the European level, right? Because there we may start to imagine an alternative. I think the movement of solidarity have been very important in, in showing the limitations, the biopolitical application of the current asylum policy, right? In, 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 in subordination, in, in rejection. But then how, what is the alternative? What do we demand? What, what, what may come uh, in, in its place? And I think there, rather than thinking about the national, I would, I would disagree with Joan, I think we should skip the national altogether by, by trying to reimagine the European from this uh, trans-municipality or trans-local sort of way, uh, another level, another scale that would, would build uh, on the knowledge and the experience of these movements that there are many of. You know?